Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Physio. In this module, I want to show you how you can use the timeline template. So I'm on the home screen and you can see there I've got a timeline template. I'm going to open that one and then just create a blank one. So when you get the timeline template on the screen, the stencils down the left, you've got two quick shapes and timeline shapes. You've also got on the ribbon a timeline tab which you can utilize. So first of all let's get a simple timeline on there. So you've got this one block line and then cylinder so I want that quite like that. Comes up with this little box asking for the time frame that you want to use. So this is going from the or 3rd of October to the 3rd of April. So it's a six months timeline. You can change the duration into wherever you want, the time frame, and you can change the format if you so wish. But I'm gonna leave it like that for this demonstration. Clicking okay to that, you get your timeline with some dates on it. If I right click on this little timeline, I can add an arrow head at the end or the beginning, wherever you want it, but I'm gonna put it at the end like so we're going that way and then you've got tools here that you can utilize um, it's totally up to you it's same as all other templates is you drag and drop whatever you want on there so let's go for some tasks you've got some curly brackets there I'll just drag them on snaps on there and then you give it a title so it's got an interval description there so I'll call this one phase one phase one and you can change the duration of this if you so wish clicking OK to that this little yellow circle allows you to change the direction of that like so well, that's easy enough phase one let's do a little milestone marker so you've got different types of milestones I'll go for this one and call that end of phase one end of phase one Click OK to that, and again, you can move that up or down. Now, there is a feature where you've got an extended timeline. So you can bring that on. So it's extended. It's going to be like a, an expanded part of this. So it's going from the 5th of October to the 18th of Feb. Let's come back a bit. Let's come back to December. So it's not such a great. Let's go to the 31st of December. Let's put that on there. So you see how it snaps out. So both of those tasks are on there. This one probably needs to come down because it's in the way a little bit. So I've pulled that other one down. Now, if I do another curly bracket, it's totally up to you whether you change these or not. Normally, you would have the thing the same. But if I go like that and put that outside of this timeline, I'll call that phase two. Phase two, and I'll leave it sitting on top like that. So you can see how, how that works. This is just expanding here. So if I put something there, I'll put a. I'll just do a different type of thing there. You've got. Um, let's go for. What can we go? Block interval. So you've got the curly. I'll put it inside there. I'll call this review. And then click OK to that. So that mirrors there because it's within inside that expanded bit. You can see that. Now, if I bring another timeline on, a different one altogether. So if I just come here, this is not part of the first one. I'll let it do the default like so. What you've got here is the ability to do a synchronized shape, either with a block or a curly brackets or a timeline or a milestone. Uh, this is what you've got here. So at the top there, you've got milestones and intervals. So whichever you do, you can synchronize it. So I add a milestone, let's just add a pin milestone to there. Okay. And then I synchronize that milestone with a different milestone 
it's going to come up with the different milestones. So it's coming up with that end of phase one on the top one. I'll click OK to that and you can see the date shifted back. So if I do the same with a block interval, so I'll get myself a block interval and just stick it there. Click OK to that and then click on synchronize. Comes up with the different options and I'll click on that one. OK. And then that's synchronized with that. So you just create a second timeline, different timeline, but you're synchronizing some of the tasks that's on there. So it's up to you how you do that. Now you've also got a today marker. You can sit that on there. Put it on there today. Now you can also put this one elapsed time. I'll put that on that one. So that's the elapsed time indicator. That's the today indicator. So you can see how that works. Now, if I go to home, click on one of these, I can change the color of this. So go orange and then change the color on this one. Go green, click on it first go green and then click on this one change that one as well different color like so so you can totally color color up the timelines now back up the top there you've got some more information where you can export or import this information into Microsoft project if you've got project which I do have so what I want to do first of all is just get myself a second page and I'll go for import data. So I'll go import, I browse for the file. This is a project file, which I've got one in documents timeline. Open that. Next, next. It's picking up the blocked timeline that I'll do. Next, finish. And then that'll drop that in and show you what that looks like. There's only a few tasks in project, so it shouldn't take too long. There you go. So that's straight from project. Now I could do exactly the same the other way, sending this out, export data into a project file, like so. So you can import project data and you can export to project from Visio. Okay. So if I go into documents, that's the exported file from Visio. Drawing one, I didn't name it as anything. So I open that and then it will open up Microsoft Project. Obviously this won't work if you haven't got Project installed. So those are the phases that I did. There you go. That's now the tasks in Project. So if I close that, come back to Visio. Go back onto the first page where I've got my multiple timelines. Now, obviously, with the rest of Visio, you've got the same functionality with regards to putting features on. So if I want you to go to design, I can then change the actual layout of this. I'll go for that one. So that's quite nice. That stands out quite a lot. I quite, I quite like that one. You've also got the background feature, which you have for all the templates. Click on the world, add the background. And you've also got the borders and titles that you can add to this as well. We'll just click on that. You can't actually get into that on here. You have to go into the background page and then just call it whatever you want. Just double click on that and type timeline. Totally up to you how you do that. That will come through onto page one. If you want that to come through to every page, you'd have to go onto page two, right click, go into page settings or page setup, and get it to look at a background page, which will be the one that's there. Click OK to that, and then that sucks through onto this page as well. 
like so. So every page has got the same background. So that would be great for company logos and things like that. But that's all I want to talk about in this little video, how you can create a timeline in Visio, how you can export it to Microsoft Project or import it from Microsoft Project. So hopefully that information is of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you on the next one.